Good day. My name is Johannes Reiche from Wageningen University and in this IGAR session I'm giving a short presentation on Center 1 based human tropic forest disturbance alerts, the so-called RAD alerts. I am giving this talk on behalf of my colleagues from Wageningen University and I would like to also recognize our colleagues from Global Forest Watch, Google, University of Maryland, European Space Agency and Altara who also strongly contributed to that work. The RAD alerts is a new forest disturbance alerts for the primary human tropical forest, and we use 10 meter cloud penetrating central one radar data. Uh, weekly updates are provided openly via Global Forest Watch, but also via our website. And uh, the RAD alerts aim really to complement existing alerts, such as the landsat based CLAD alerts, but also the, the new Sentinel 2 CLAD alerts and the L band JJ Fast alerts. And overall, forest disturbance alerts aim at supporting law enforcement activities to stop illegal and unsustainable forest disturbances to detect them as quick as possible so people on the ground can act and, and intervene, but also to make human activities in forests more transparent and provide this information more timely. And the current coverage of the RAD alert is the uh, human tropics of Africa and it also covers uh, insular Southeast Asia. Here an example of the RAD alerts for an um, selective logging event in the Central African Republic. What we can see is the amazing spatial and temporal detail at which we can now track these small scale changes over time. So what we see is logging roads developing over time and shortly after the logging roads have been established, we see these indications of selective logging that we can track. And uh, the selective logging, what we see is basically canopy gaps based on on um, high valuable trees that have been extracted. So far, um, persistent cloud cover really limited, limited the performance of optical based systems in, in the Congo Basin, and that led to delayed information. So what we see here is actually the, the, the number of available Landsat observations on an annual level, and we can see Gabon is really, which is considered the, the cloudiest place in the world. We can see that there is often one or less observations available on annual level. Also other areas in the Congo Basin here, DRC, it's only few observations, cloud-free observations available per year. And having only few observations available per year really limits the performance. So we, what that often leads to delayed detect, detection and that then kind of propagates into delayed enforcement activities. Uh, another aspect that should be mentioned is that the remote sensing signal of many small scale changes such as selective logging disappears quickly. What we see here is uh, some logging roads developing in February, March, this high resolution planet data. Uh, in September, we see some canopy gaps as the result of selective logging and they appear in September for the first time. We can still see them clearly in October, but in November, like three months after we see them for the first time, they already disappear due to canopy closure and understory regrowth. And without having actually temporarily consistent and high temporally detailed observations available, um, we will miss a lot of these observations. And that is now the big opportunity of having uh, Central One data available. That is not handled by clouds. How do we, de we define forest disturbance in our approach? So we define it very similar to other al alert system in a functional way. Um, as being the complete or partial removal of tree cover of a vignette pixel, in our case, a 10 meter center one pixel. Complete removal is often associated with stench replacement and partial removal with either boundary pixels or something like selective logging. Um, I mentioned it before, we use the center one C band radar data that provides uh, for the first time radar data at global coverage and with an open data policy. And in that way, it is really a game changer. Um, it provides high spatial and detail, high spatial and temporal detail, so it provides information at 10 meter pixel spacing. And for the tropics, images are available every 6 to 12 days. We see here the coverage of six daily data in dark gray, and everything else in the tropics is covered every 12 days. So we see in the Congo basin, many areas are only covered 12 days, um, but for example, for insular Southeast Asia, most of it is covered every six days. And this high temporal coverage is mainly available in regions that have uh, tectonic activity. How do we detect forest disturbances? 
everything is based on a probabilistic approach that we have developed over the past years and that we were now able to uh, scale within the cloud environment of Google Earth Engine. First, we create historical image matrices that show us previous forest conditions, so that basically tell the algorithm how undisturbed forest looks like, so what is the distribution of undisturbed forest. Every newly incoming image is processed using a number of pre-processing steps. And after that, we apply our forest disturbance algorithm and we indicate, we calculate the probability of a, a pixel being disturbed, so the forest disturbance probability, and we indicate that there is a potential new deforest. And in the next step, we build confidence in it with a time series approach. So subsequent observations are used to iteratively update the forest disturbance probability and increase or decrease confidence. Uh, if the confidence decreases below a certain level, we unflag it, and if it increases above a certain level, we confirm it with high confidence. We also apply a minimum mapping unit of 0.1 hectare that we do with by, by um, having a threshold of 10 8 connected pixels. So that also means that in theory there's 10 pixels that are connected in a line that also qualifies as our minimum mapping unit. And results for Africa for alerts larger than 0 0.2 hectares show a commission error of 2% and an omission error of 5%, which is both very low. Here we see uh, examples of the right forest disturbance alerts for Africa for three different types of drivers of change. On the left side, we see selective logging. That is the same example where you've seen an, an, an animation at the beginning of the presentation. In the middle, we see uh, an example of smallholder agriculture, so where local people mainly uh, log small patches of forest to plant crops. That is by far the main driver of uh, forest disturbances in the Congo Basin. On the right side, we see the third key driver, which is mining. And here we see clear patterns of open pit mining for often gold, for example. Here's an example from another part of the world, from Papua New Guinea, where we see also selective logging. Uh, we see here clearly the logging roads and also the indication of selective logging in their surroundings. Here an example from Borneo, where on one side we see the expansion of, of oil palm plantations. On the, on the bottom we see infrastructure developments, a new road being developed. But that also shows the variety of changes that we are able to detect. How are the, the red alerts distributed? So we distribute them very similar to all the other forest disturbance alerts. So one by first, we basically for every detected change, we we um, provide the level of confirmation, so whether it's unconfirmed, so low confidence alerts or high confidence alerts, high confidence is confirmed, we name them conf confirmed alerts, and we also provide the date when the change was first detected. The data is available at Global Forest Watch for visualization at the moment, and very soon the data will also be available for download and will be interested in Global Forest Watch Pro for analysis. Uh, the data is also available at our website. And I would uh, suggest you to visit the website for more information on, for example, have a Google of Engine app, but also for method updates, for limitations, for further developments, and also for information on how to access the red alerts via Google of Engine. Um, since this is a rather limited presentation here in this um, short session, I would point you to a Global Forest Watch webinar that we gave together that I gave together with colleagues from Global Forest Watch, but also from the University of Maryland so on presenting RAD alerts, but also new CLAD sent on two alerts. And um, that webinar really focuses on the, the limitations of the system, the advantages of the system, but also the complementarities of the system. And it really points out, and that is very interesting, that the system in itself, the methods are very similar, but the difference mainly stem from the characteristics of the data stream. So in our case, the characteristics and limitations of Central 1 C and Radar on for the Central 2 clutter alerts, the limitations and advantages of the Central 2 data. 
So where are we going from here? Next steps and research. We are on the way of uh, on the way of improving the alerts and expanding into other geographies. So we plan and and after the summer to provide also alerts for the rest of the pantropics of South America. And we are, on the, we are doing more, more uh, validation through inventory data. I would also mention that we have published our pre-processing workflow for generating analysis ready central one backscatter data that we use in our approach in an open source uh, Google of Engine package. And we have published it. And next steps that are also following is the combination of existing alerts. So the combination of RAD alerts and the CLAT alerts together with Global Forest Watch, but what I forgot to mention here, of course, also our colleagues from the University of Maryland. And with this, I would like to finish this short presentation and would like to thank everybody to join the cycle session. And I'm very much looking forward to your questions. And please feel free, welcome to visit our website and to contact me for any questions. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful day.